cutting-edge clinical trial made a breakthrough in its effort to cure sickle cell anemia. The painful genetic disease affects about 100,000 Americans every year, mostly African Americans. Sickle cell anemia causes some red blood cells to become deformed into a sickle shape and die. Those cells clog the blood flow and can lead to infections or strokes. For last night's 60 Minutes, Dr. John LaPook followed Janelle Stevenson for more than a year. She had an innovative kind of gene therapy at the National Institutes of Health. The therapy uses HIV to treat patients, but the virus is weakened so it cannot cause AIDS. Despite HIV's frightening reputation, the trial results, well, they're remarkable. This is Janelle before any treatment. Right. All across her blood, you can see these really abnormal shapes. Uh, this one in particular is shaped like a sickle. This is Nine months later, is this is what Dr. Tisdell saw. Not a sickle cell in sight. Was there ever a moment where you saw one of these normal looking smears and thought, is this the right patient? Oh, absolutely. When you're a scientist, you're skeptical all the time. So first thing you do is look and make sure it's that patient. Go grab another one, make sure it's the same. And we've done all that and uh, indeed, her blood looks normal. Move, switch your arms and move. And Remember, Janelle used to struggle just to walk up a flight of stairs. And you fall. Boom. And a fall like this would have landed her in the hospital. Boom. Yeah. Good job. You did it. Bam. Janelle, <laughs> you look amazing. Thank you. I have to say, I was a little nervous when you were thrown and you went down on the mat. There's nothing. There's nothing. My body just felt strong. I was nervous, too. She looks amazing, too. John watched his report last night with four sickle cell anemia patients. Shireen Barzi Kennard was born with the disease. Sidra Stewart had her first blood transfusion when she was just five. Before he was 12, Jamal Fowler had already been admitted to the hospital about 200 times. And Ernie Cabral says the pain from the disease affects every single aspect of his life. They were joined by nurse practitioner Gina Simon from New York's Mount Sinai Hospital. What do you think? It's a lot of information to take in. There's the big positive outcome, which we all hope for, but then there's the risk that you have to weigh in as well, which can be very intimidating, but it's a step in the right direction. Shireen, when Janelle was describing her pain, and especially when she was describing not being believed that she was in pain. You were shaking your head like that. Because that's, just, that's happened to me a few times, going to the hospital and stating, this is the disease I have, this is the pain that I'm in, and they didn't understand. And so they thought I was there just to get payments. I actually wanted to cry during that part because you're not believed at all, and nobody could understand what was happening for me. Have you guys experienced the same Absolutely. thing? Absolutely. Yes. Definitely. And your reactions were, you know, surprisingly, like, not exactly what I expected. How so? Um, I guess I was expecting a little more, like, excitement. Uh, excitement. <laughs> because we've talked about gene therapy and the downside. It's really profound and scary. But I think seeing how you reacted, um, you know, I'm still as enthusiastic yeah. as ever. What were the scary parts to you? You want to say the number one thing? Yeah. <laughs> Once we heard the HIV right. thing. So I can tell you right now that that HIV virus has been disabled. It's been crippled. So it cannot infect you. It cannot. The part of it that allows it to infect you is gone. The reason why it's used is that it's very good at transferring DNA into a cell. Because I could guarantee everybody felt the same. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> you know, it's exciting to know that we're making breakthrough. And yes, there's a lot of unknown variables as to what's going to happen five years from now. The other thing that, you know, a little bit worrisome or scary is, uh, you know, sickle cell has become part of my identity. It's who I am and what I know. And I think without the sickle cell, I would not have some of the characteristics I, I have, even if it's down to my resilience or my determination. And it, it would be once you're cured, trying to find out who you really are, who are you now? Dealing with it every day, you know, dealing with the struggles that come along with it. It's like, that's, that's what drives us. That's what drives us to stay strong, to keep moving. For me, they kind of gave me more of hope and this gave me a, a chance to feel like I had a choice now. I'm very optimistic. The possibility of a cure, that's an, a, that's an amazing thing. Even though I say I may have the fear of who I'm going to be, does not mean that if that opportunity was not offered to me that I wouldn't take it. It's just something that I would have to really think about. Think about. 
Dr. LaPook joins us now with a woman featured in the 60 Minutes Report, the lovely Janelle Stevenson. Good morning. It's good so good morning. to see you. I love the piece last night, John, when you said Janelle. And Janelle, you smiled. I swear you had 126 <laughs> teeth. Your smile was so big. But the thing that got me in the report yesterday, you, you described it as bone crushing, sharp pain. Yes. You're in the hospital on the floor and they don't believe you. Take us to that moment. What are you thinking when they don't believe the pain that you're in? It's What bothered you most? To me, it's it's absolutely mind-boggling to take away the doctor-patient aspect of it and just as human beings. If you see a fellow human being fall mm -hmm. and you don't even extend your hand to help them up, mm -hmm. I, I see a problem with that. Mm -hmm. And then add that you're a doctor on top of it, it doesn't make sense. Well, it seems to be a common reaction because the other woman said that you're not believed, that she was not believed too, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the question is, where's the empathy? Yeah. Right? And, and you kind of looked at, well, as, as you're the other. And I can tell you as a physician, this was very emotional for me yeah, because from 1976 until about, for about 10 years, I was taking care of a lot of patients with sickle cell anemia and I felt completely helpless. It was like, go ahead and take care of this. By the way, I'm, I'm handcuffing you. We gave them some pain medicines. It really didn't help. And so now, fade out, fade in, to see Janelle get slammed down to the mat, yeah, pop up, yeah. it was, it was so emotional. Yeah. I mean, no words for that. And not only is it a painful disease, we know it's life-threatening also. And at 22 years old, you said that you were a middle-ager. Yes. Now that you have the rest of your life ahead of you, how has that changed your outlook? And how old are you now? 28 now. 28, okay. And I just see so many possibilities now. It's no longer me planning my, my life. It's not a question of what's next. It's what's right now. What can I do right now and live in the present? And the other day, I think I was going to uh, work and I ran out of gas. And I was like, is this the most... Uh, Content, like the most horrible thing that can happen to me today is running out of gas. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll bet you weren't I'm even okay. mad. I wasn't yeah. mad. I was happy. I, yeah. I, yes, I, I ran out of gas. I welcomed the opportunity yes. to have everyday problems. Wow. Yeah. And look at her energy. Yeah. She's not running out of gas. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the NIH director, Francis Collins, said that this looks like a cure. Right. How soon can this be scaled to help other people? Well, um, yeah, it looks like a cure. And we're all, we're all supposed to be scientists, but we're a little bit superstitious. We don't want to jinx it, but it does yeah. look like a cure. And I spoke to him a couple of days ago, and he said, you know what? Scaling it up to the to so that millions of people can be treated is very important, and they're actually on the path to do that. I mean, it's technical, but they're on a path to do it where you don't need chemotherapy. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so that would make it, you know, instead of being able to have it to go through the hospital, and you're mm -hmm. in the hospital for a month, and you could have infection, just doing it very quickly, and uh, then it could be scaled up for the millions of people around the world who are suffering. So. Janelle, tell us a little bit of, of what you went through, though, in the, in the treatment. Starting, it started with the frequent blood transfusions just on a schedule, and those alone had calmed down my crises phenomenally. Like, I wasn't not having as many episodes. I wasn't in the hospital as frequent. And as the trial continued, and they introduced um, chemo, and then my new cells. Of course, I felt terrible for maybe two weeks, but after that, it just, my body just felt stronger and stronger and every day. It's funny, because I could actually feel the cells engrafting in my body. Like, wow. I felt them soaking in there. And I was like, yes. Amazing. <laughs> but what was it like knowing there were no guarantees, you know, that you're, this was still a trial, knowing you could still possibly die? The way I looked at it was, I will take any chance, yeah. any chance. I don't really, I'm not concerned with the negative outcomes of it because what I was going through and living with up until that point, mm -hmm. I couldn't do it anymore, it's too much. And you weren't alone, you were with your family. How quickly, how is your father, Ray, who is He's at your great. side? He was great, yeah. he was really happy. The last <laughs> thing I wanted to say, say is that um, we found out last night and Janelle and I were talking, it's a little destabilizing in terms of your identity. I mean, who are you? Yeah. The old you and the new you. And, it, you know, when she got home, it was like she was a Maserati, right? But she was going like 30 miles an hour. She was yeah. afraid. Then, Let's just open this thing up. Yeah. And she started doing all these activities. Yes. Yes. Well, it's an impressive new you, Janelle. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming in <laughs> to share you. your story with us. Thanks, John.